So, you know, it's a bit of a blustery day and I'm out here at Heirloom Roses with Cheryl, but Cheryl, there are still some things that we can do. And may I say that you have roses blooming all over the place out here still, which mm. is delightful. We do. It's surprising. It really is yes. beautiful. And there are some things that the home gardener can do to prepare their own roses for winter. So give us a couple of tips on that. At Heirloom, we don't typically prune all the way to the ground. We don't do a hard prune at this time of the year. But you can see we have removed some of the uh, spent blooms. Mm -hmm. We do the deadheading uh, through um, the end of summer. And the only time when we would really prune something would be if it was obviously dead at this time of the year. Mm -hmm. Or if you've got lar large canes on a climber that are going to whip around. Sure. Uh, we don't want the whipping around to cause damage to the canes through the winter. And the cold wind can be uh, very dehydrating to yeah. the canes. Yeah. So we would do that. But otherwise, we would leave the blooms on. And then what you get are these beautiful hips. Well, I was going to say behind us, now this one is just covered in bright red, beautiful hips. This is Shropshire Lad, one of David Austin English roses. Uh -huh. And we've allowed this rose to just continue to bloom, not deadheaded at all. So what it produces are these beautiful hips. And the variety of hips that roses bloom are just completely varied. I mean, oranges, kind of a yellow to reds, and shapes are different. It's amazing how many there are. Yes, and some are very large, uh -huh. almost the size of a crab apple. It just really depends on the variety of rose. And the fun thing, too, is, I mean, many cultures throughout history, and still do, use them in cooking. They make teas out of them. But I'll tell you what, you guys cut some of these off and did some beautiful displays with rose hips. So I want to go inside and take a look at some of those now. Great, let's go take a look. All right. So now, Cheryl, we have come inside and, and we're going to be showing you some wonderful ways to use rose hips in your displays. But before we do that, I'm here with Louise. And Louise, what is this thing that you're holding in your hand? Well, sometimes you may find this growing on a rose in your garden. And it's an odd looking furry um, object and it's peculiar. Uh, some people use it in arrangements and actually we do have one in an arrangement. But I wanted to show you, I'll open this up and this is a rose cane that has been stung by a bee. Hmm. Or no, I'm sorry, a wasp. Mm -hmm. And inside this are little uh, encapsulated areas and the larvae, a tiny, tiny little green uh, larvae is in each one of those and that's going to winter over in this nice little cocooned warm kept mm -hmm. warm from the winter and they will emerge in the spring and it really it doesn't kill the plant it doesn't kill the plant it doesn't really hurt the plant um, uh, if you don't want this wasp to develop you would take it off you cut it off and burn yeah. it but it's really not going to hurt anything and they really are kind of cool they are now she mentioned that one was used in a uh, in one of the arrangements so i'm gonna sneak down here and, and tell me your name hi william i'm leslie hi leslie now which one did you do and give me a little information about it well because i like to cook uh -huh. i thought well this is another way that we can enjoy roses in our kitchen so but i did take one of those wasp stings you and sure incorporated did. it in my arrangement here. It's kind of hidden down there. But that's among the uh, rambler rose hips here and I've got some white new dawn which is a climber, some blue spruce, some barberry, Queen Anne's lace. And I love the way you tilted the lid up <laughs> as part of the whole whole thing there. It's really charming. Lovely job. Thank you. Okay now next is Kathleen. Hi Kathleen. Hi. And so you did a couple of them here, didn't you? I did. I did these two here. Um, I'm in charge of the display gardens here, in charge of the garden care. And so I'm actually still looking at, there's so many blooms that we have, even though it's almost mid-November. It's, it's really true. We're having a it? really good fall bloom. So um, I happened to see these guys as I was dashing out in the rain, cutting things this morning. And the this is the dragon's eye. This is one of the Clemens roses that we grow here. And... Um, I have incorporated also the Queen Anne's Lace. This is actually, you would think it was red twig dogwood, but it is uh, some twigs off of Trace of Bougnay, which hmm. is a rugosa. Um, this is hips from Lydia Rose. And so this I did as kind of a fall theme. And then this one here, we had some of this beautiful purple uh, beauty berry that was blooming in the yard. And so I did that as a cool tone with some blue spruce. I have some mock orange in there, some hardy fuchsia, which a lot of that still people have blooming in their yards. And I have also sword fern and a beautiful carpet pink rose in there. 
And it all just looks perfect in that wonderful crystal uh, crystal vase. All right, Cheryl. I know, I know you, huh? Because we've just been talking about That's it right. now. This is beautiful, too. What would you do? I decided to go with a minimalist look because that's kind of what I prefer, but I've used hips from White New Dawn. That's this large, more orange colored hip here, but I incorporated it with a castor bean, and I've got some peony, epimedium, and some mock orange in the front. And I love, I love green. the castor bean edition. That is so cool. All right, my dear, let's talk about what you did. Well, this is what I did right here. And uh, the rose hips are from John Clare and a species rose. And we have blue spruce, some uh, cedar, and uh, leaves from um, Trees Bugnay. Mm, absolutely beautiful. And what is your name? My name is Shirley. And Shirley, you have a charming thing here. What, what's going on down there? Well, this one is uh, Leslie decided to put the ivy over, and then we used the Queen Anne's lace, and one of the roses that we used was pretty in pink. Well, and, and I love this because you could even take this out as place settings. Put them, yes, oh, you can. Oh, absolutely charming. Now, how many of you are like trained florists? Okay, not, not, a, not a yes among them. So really, if, if this lovely group of ladies can, can go out to the yard, cut some things, and make these beautiful arrangements, all of you can, we encourage you to come out to uh, Heirloom Roses and chat with their wonderful staff. It's always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.